Vertical declining dials are sundials that indicate local apparent time. Vertical south dials are a special case, as are vertical north, vertical east and vertical west dials. The word declining means that the wall is offset from one of these four cardinal points. There are dials that are not vertical, and these are called reclining dials. A sundial schema uses a compass and a straight edge to firstly to derive the essential angles for that latitude, then to use this to draw the hour lines on the dial plate. In modern terminology, this would mean that graphical techniques were used to derive sin x display style sin x and m tan y display style m tan y and from it sin x tan y display style sin x tan y Topic: Basic calculation. There are four basic angles that are needed to construct a vertical declining dial. Wa described them such: SD sub style distance. This is the angle on the dial plate between the foot of the style and the vertical noon line. Shish sub style height. This defines the slope of the style. It has no effect on the design of the dial plate. DL difference in longitude in drawing the dial. DL represents the hour angle, polar angle. Holwell, John, 1712. Clavis horologia, when the shadow passes under the style. AV angle to vertical. This is used to fix a starting point in the final stage of laying out equal hours with a protractor. With a calculator this can be easily be derived from the SD and DL, when using compass and ruler it is a construction baseline. It never appears on the final dial. The four basic calculation have a certain symmetry. Tan SD equals sin D, cot phi sin shish equals cos D, cos phi cot DL equals cot D sin phi cot av equals sin d tan phi equals topic was method 1973 equals a semicircle is drawn with a descending vertical for a morning dial, or southeast declining dial, a right angled triangle is drawn to the left with the top angle being the co latitude. A second triangle is drawn to the right, with a top angle of D, the declination of the wall, finding SD the substyle length. The bottom bar of the left triangle represents cot phi, the length is noted and using dividers copied over to the hypotenuse of the right triangle, and a further horizontal bar drawn, that will have the length of sin D. This is measured and placed on the bottom bar of the left triangle. This sets the position M, and the substyle line the term dialist use for the angle, finding shish, the substyle height The height of the right triangle is noted, and a line of this length is swung from point M, till it touches the circle. The angle from the origin to here, is the substyle height, the term dialist use for the angle. Drawing the hour lines at this point only three lines matter, the vertical, the substyle length and substyle height. A circle marked off in 15 degrees angles is needed circular protractor. An arbitrary point on the substyle line is chosen. From here, a long line, at right angles to it, is drawn. A line is drawn at right angles from the substyle height, so that it passes through that point. Its length is noted. The length is copied from the point to O. This will become the center used by circular protractor. 
Draw a line from here to crossing of the vertical and the long line. The circular protractor is a line so that zero falls on the new line. Points are marked off and lines drawn through them to the long line. From each of these crossings, a final line is drawn back to the origin at the top. These are the hour lines. 12 is on the vertical, and the forenoon hours are to the left and the afternoon hours fewer in number to the right. <laughs> Wigham Richardson's method Before the protractor became ubiquitous, compasses and the scale of chords were used for laying out an angle. This method originally used them. A large cross is drawn, ACB being the vertical line and PCQ horizontally. Two arcs are drawn to the right, AQ, and court. Two triangle are drawn ACT with the co-latitude at the top, and CWX with the declination D at the center. For the example these will be 38 degrees and 20 degrees finding SDA line is drawn from X through C to a point that will be eventually named S take compasses and using the radius CD swing and clockwise arc to this line, where it cuts as the point S in other words CS is equal in length to CD. Drop a perpendicular line RS from line PQ to cut through S to fix the point Y, copy the length RS, from C onto the line PQ. This is psi. RS equals psi. Join A to Y. This is the substyle distance SD, finding shish and the center of the equinoctial along line, perpendicular to I is drawn it will take the points G, Y, P and MYG as equal in length to CR. Join AG and the angle YAG as the substyle height. Drawing the hour lines at this point only three lines matter, the vertical, the substyle length and substyle height. A circle marked off in 15 degrees angles as needed circular protractor. A perpendicular line through Y is dropped from the sub-style line the crossing is marked G. Compasses are used to transfer this length onto the sub-style line. The point is called O, this is the center of the equinoctial circle a long line FF is drawn perpendicularly. Center the circular protractor on O, with one line passing through P call this 12. From A the actual hour lines through each of the points stars, where the protractor lines cross G, Y, P and M. <laughs> Use of dialing rulers Foster Searle's dialing scales 1638. Foster is credited for producing a set of scales to assist in the laying out of the hour line on a dial. To use them shish and sd must already be known. The scales are placed on the sd line, and lines are drawn using the calculated shish value rather than the actual latitude. Topic: Zarbula method. Zarbula is credited with the design of over a hundred sundials in Haute's Alps and Piedmont. This region straddles the 45 degrees parallel, and as such, his dials are a special case. He worked directly on the wall, and didn't require to know the latitude or the declination of the dial. These we found by observation. His dials were examples of frescoes, and all gave five-minute accuracy. <inaudible> <inaudible> Laying out the dial With a plumb bob he drew a vertical line on the wall. This is the noon line. He hammered a rod into the wall at right angles to the vertical. This is known as the center of the dial, see 
he observed and marked the shadow thrown by the tip of that rod, throughout a day. This line, technically known as a hyperbolic declination line. Using a set of compasses, he determines the line of symmetry on the wall. This is the substyle line, all the rest of the dial was laid out using a 45 degrees square, with a 15 degrees measure at the end. He drew a horizontal line at a point of choice on the dial plate. This was the horizon. The square was placed on the substyle facing outwards, it is slid into any convenient position where it cuts the horizon, and he drew a perpendicular line drawn to that point. This line is called the equatorial. A line was drawn from that point to the center of the dial, it was the 18h line or 6h depending on the declination d of the wall. The points where the equatorial crosses the noon line and where the equatorial crosses the substyle line were important. He placed apex of the square on the substyle line, so the sides passed through the equatorial points mentioned, the 12h and 18h markers. The apex point is called the auxiliary equatorial center. A protractor or squares drew off 15 degrees intervals on the equatorial. These were connected to the center of the dial, the hour lines. The distance from the auxiliary equatorial center to the equatorial formed the substyle height at that point. See also Schema for horizontal dials <laughs>